Oh, I see the little circle. This is how live happens. It just takes a little bit of time, but we're getting there. Hello, everybody paying attention. Uh, my name is Russell Lawlicker, this guy. Uh, I'm a podcaster of CX Storytime and The Upsell. There's a mug up there somewhere if I can get it. There we go. There we go. Um, and I have the absolute unbelievable honor of being represented for Social Media Camp as I'm hosting a Facebook Live series. You can tell because you're watching me right now, and you're also watching... No, nope, it's going to be weird. This jump. There you go. No, I can't do it. I can't do the reverse mirror thing. Needless to say, that's Mike Gingrich on there, on, right beside my face. How you doing, Mike? Hey, doing well, and uh, glad to be here with you, Ross. Yes, I'm excited. You are coming back to Social Media Camp, which is just a few short months away. Um, number three? It will be. It will be my third time, and uh, yeah, excited. It's been a, a little hiatus there, so looking forward to coming back. And okay, so this is your third time. What's bringing you back? Like, what's what 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 brings you back to our beautiful little Victorian city? Yeah, you know, I uh, always appreciated uh, both Victoria and uh, the conference itself, and uh, so I, it was always on my list. If you know, if the opportunity came up, um, I'm ready to come back, ready to speak. So, you know, kind of stayed in touch with uh, Chris and Paul about that, and this year looked like the opportunity was was right, and so I said, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, uh, just because. I've appreciated it. I mean, I know the conference has kind of grown over the years, mm -hmm. and but the, I mean, every year, those two years that I was there, just uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, liked what was happening, and uh, liked the venue, uh, the city. So, you know, hey, it's, um, it's a mini vacation for me to come back and speak. Sold. Uh, totally understand. And, and uh, obviously, this is the 10th year, so we got a lot of big names, and we're bringing back yeah. a lot of the big names, obviously, as yourself. Uh, I'm going to just quickly stop, though, and say that if anybody has any comments or questions or anything, uh, that's what the whole point of Facebook is, is the whole comment section at the bottom, the engagement. So feel free to throw us uh, one, and I'm sure Mike will be more than happy to answer uh, one of those questions. So there you go. Yeah, Engagement. Go. Social media. Go figure. There it is. A uh, question I want to ask, especially for us, um, how do I put this, uh, senior types, the types that grew up without social media, uh, those of us who actually grew up in an analog world-ish, social media is such, um, we take it for granted a lot, but it's also not taken for granted as much as people might think in, in that there are a lot of a steep learning curves for a lot of people. Yeah. So I want to quickly ask, as someone who lives and breathes social, as we're certainly going to talk about uh, a little bit later in the in the talk, it, what do you love about social media? Like, what gets you excited about this? You know, I, I I like to be on the edge of innovation, and so I mean, social media always does that, and and just with the evolvement with uh, platforms rolling out new tools, those types of things. I mean, that's energizing to me. I mean, I li I like to. You know, Instagram comes out with something new. Somebody, uh, you know, shares about that. I want to go check it out. Then, you know, I want to I want to play with those kind of things. So I, I like I'm an innovator, so I like that innovation aspect of it. Um, you know, beyond that, I think it just a tremendous communication tool. I mean, um, there's there's occasionally some of those people that uh, that say, hey, you know. I need to take a break from social media, and they say, you know, they're going to take a, you know, whatever, six weeks, or they're going to do this or do that, and I, I frankly, I just, I don't get it, you know, I'm just like, and they're like, oh, you know, I spent too much time on there, and I'm like, well, you know, I mean, if you were speeding in your car, are you going to stop driving your car? <laughs> I, I, I just, I mean, I mean, so for me, That's a good metaphor. It's, a, it's a communication tool that is, um, very important that is intricate. I mean, I, I get I get news there. I stay in touch with people there. I learn about things there. So um, that's why it's uh, it's critical for me. It's important, and why I just kind of have it as a natural part of uh, my life and how I consume information and stay in touch. And I don't think people realize how much control they actually do have of their experience in social. Like, I can't believe how many people are like, oh, Twitter and Facebook, oh, the noise and the art. You're following all those people. You you are the yeah. one that, that has control over your experience and, and how you use it. I'm certainly in the same boat. I love social media because it, it makes me feel connected in the way I want to feel connected to the world. So, yeah, I agree entirely. Yeah, and, and, and I think what you just said there, the world, too. So, for me, that's the other key is that uh, – it, it helps me easily stay in touch with things globally, friends globally, you know, and, and so that, that's a key for me. I, I love to travel. I love to get to places. Obviously, I can't do that all the time, but I can stay in touch with those things via social media very easily, and I appreciate that. 
Speaking of entitlement, and social, it's funny because social media immediately people think it's like the other. It's something other than the real world. However, it's, it can get quite tangible, as i.e. Social Media Camp is actually going to be involved with the TC10K, which is our, uh, for those not in Victoria, it is a 10-kilometer run, which I will never do, just because, you know, I like to breathe. But most people, healthy people do, and uh, you are actually going to be involved in this. Tell me about it. I think this is awesome. So, uh, yes, I love to run distances, and um, I'm an avid, you know, triathlete, uh, and so... I honestly kind of look for destination races to run. And so I actually knew about the TC10K before Chris mentioned to me that they were hooking up with this because I, I Googled that. I was like, hey, I'm going somewhere. Is there any races around there? And I was like, yes, yes, it's on Sunday. After that, I'm staying, that type of thing. So that, that's how I am. And uh, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And uh, for, for me, it's going to be – so. I, I'm starting to try to, you know, I, most I've run in the States. You know, you get to different states. I try to do that. Last year, I took a big leap, uh, ran a marathon in Iraq. Um, that's maybe another story for another time. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and and so, you know, heading up to Canada to run this 10K there. I'm looking forward to that. But And glad that uh, we're finding, you know, some kind of commonality. It's just a, it's a great fit that conferences, you know, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday's the race. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to represent uh, Team Social Media Camp. Well, I hope you get to enjoy yourself a little more than just the one race. I mean, like, you're, you're building up to that race at the end, but there's so much more, the eating and the, and the enjoyment beforehand. I hope you're not yes. like, well, I can't because, you know, I'm running. No, 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 no problem with that, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, one of the reasons I also wanted to bring up running is because uh, your most recent book happens to have you on the cover, Possibly Running. Hypothetically, it is. So yes. it's, in my notes, I got, I'm very well prepared in my interviewing, uh, making the miles count 21 days to a life of impact. Okay, we've just been talking about social media. You're coming to social media camp. What is this? What inspired you to write this? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I kind of I kind of live within a philosophy that uh, kind of, I can boil it down to four words. I try to add value. I try to do it and be uncommon. Add value, be uncommon. I think that those terms work for life. They work for marketing as well. So when I think about my life, you know, uh, along the way, I want to add value. And the best way I can do that oftentimes is to do something uncommon. I mean, that's – I'll give you the quick synopsis, and that's why I ran that marathon in Iraq. So I was raising funds to rebuild homes for people that had been displaced by ISIS when they had controlled Mosul, and now they're able to go back. They don't have funds to rebuild their home. So that was kind of tying in. Um, a you know a purpose with uh, something I like to do, which is the running. So making the miles count for me was a way to try to add value to others. Writing this book was to say, hey, um, there there is you know more to life. If you if you think you're stuck in the daily grind, then uh, it's time to do something. We got to break out because you have you know great potential, great gifts. Uh, we need to. See, you need to see that and realize. Here's here's some things to help you reflect on that, and uh, and it's going to involve doing some you know things that may feel uncommon to you, but that will help you kind of get beyond kind of that stuck spot you're at. And uh, so yeah, it's it's um, for me it all fits together because when I'm marketing for a company, I'm trying to help them say, okay, how can we in social media? One of the big things it does, or that you can communicate, is that you need to add value. A Facebook page needs to add value. You can't sell, sell, sell. You know, you have to be a resource. Okay, and um, to to be uh, to drive engagement, to have people uh, pay attention to you, you have to do that often in an uncommon way. Okay, and so that you have to be uniquely you. I mean, there's always going to be other people out there. There's always going to be competitors. There's always going to be noise. Um, how can you be uniquely you? That will be uncommon, uh, and so that's you know in the social world. But I think that applies in a broader sense in life. And so for me, it was a matter of just saying, I want to get these things down on paper. There it is. Beautiful. I uh, just got a question from oddly enough the TC10K, the people that are actually behind the marathon, uh, asking the name of the book. Uh, it's making the miles count appropriate for runners. Uh, Twenty-one days to a life of impact. I know you can get it. On, is it on Amazon? I know you can get it off your website. It is. Yes, Amazon.com, yeah. Fantastic. Hey, Angela Crocker has just arrived. She's also a speaker at Social Media Camp, uh, wrote a few books herself, that lady. So welcome, Angela. Howdy. 
Uh, Mike, uh, so I, before we, I want to just, sorry, I'm getting a little flustered because I know we're going to talk about lead generation and that excites me a little bit. Yeah. So your workshop at Social Media Camp, I'm going to stop yeah. looking down because then I look so professional. Uh, game plan for social media lead generation. So okay. we've talked about social media as something that is, uh, adds value to your life, but I'm, yeah. I'm really curious about it adding value to your business and lead generation is a huge part of that. So what can we expect from the talk you're bringing us? Yeah, I think that uh, you know what I'm going to bring is a strategy um, that that helps you kind of understand how social media can can fit together uh, with some of the other things that you're doing. So when I talk about lead generation from a social media perspective, um, I like to tie it together with your website, often with email marketing or text text message marketing as well. And so you need to have a combination uh, that's integrated. And so, you know, what they can expect from me is to understand uh, how you can bring those pieces together, what you need to do on social media, and the add value piece fits in my funnel. So I've got uh, a couple key pieces in my funnel that uh, you, how you attract the right audience, um, how you can engage that audience, and then how you can give them something of value, some type of offer that can move them from just a fan or a follower to someone that's is a potential buyer customer uh, through signing up for some email uh, or you know text message, and then you can nurture, you can build that relationship, build trust further um, on social media and through that other channel, whether that's email, uh, text message marketing, that type of piece there. So cohesively, uh, social media is a key tool mm. that allows you to uh, attract, reach that ideal audience, that, that ideal customer base. So, bums in seats. Who's sitting in your auditorium? Like, who ideally is sitting there watching your workshop? What kind of people would benefit from this? Okay, okay. So, it is the the marketer who has been tasked with saying uh, social media, uh, we, we know we need to be on social media, and we're there, we're not sure that we're maximizing this, and we're not necessarily... Um, my, my bosses or you know my um, even myself as an owner want to want to see ROI mm. what do I need to do okay so it's uh, it's that it's either the small business owner or it's the marketer tasked with kind of uh, taking it to the next level and putting it together uh, from hey we're doing something to hey we've got a plan and, it, and and a system here and we know how these pieces fit together and we know what we need to do when and how we can measure that at the end so lead generation for social media, what problems do you think it would solve for a lot of these people? Like, is, yeah. it, is, is it about executive? Is it about, like, what, is, what, is, what problems are they, are they able to fix getting better at this? Yes. So I think that um, they're going to be able to solve the problem of, hey, we're spending, you know, time and dollars on social media, but are we getting anything out of that? Mm -hmm. So this is going to answer that one just because you'll be able to have some metrics you'll be able to measure. And um, they're saying, hey, you know, we're, we're on social media. But uh, is, it, is it really worth it because isn't it just, you know, we're just posting pictures and having a good time, um, but it, it's, it's for that executive that needs to understand uh, how this can fit together in a strategy that can impact the bottom line and that that type of engagement that seems like um, fun ultimately has a purpose that with the algorithms, they see more of your content, they get to know you a little bit better, that pays off down the pike when you tie them together. Beautiful. So what are people doing wrong now? Like, they're, they're obviously going to be, are they're obviously out there trying, or they've, they've heard the word lead, or they do have some idea of lead generation, traditional uh, lead yeah. generation. So what, where are they going wrong right now? Yeah, I'm working with a number of small businesses, um, organizations, and a couple things I see. Number one is... Um, uh, they're, they're not tying together what they're doing on, on social media uh, with, with anything else. So there's nothing, there's no thought on how that fits with their website content or how that fits with their email marketing. So, so number one, they're not integrating anything. They're just, they're just doing something on Instagram. And they're saying, hey, we're trying to grow our Instagram following. We're trying to engage them there. Uh, and that's it. So they're not thinking holistically in that piece. Um, two, they're, they're not consistent. They're... They're, they're hit and miss. Uh, so, so maybe they're a small business and, you know, of course they're busy. They got multiple tasks, but, 
if we if we think through this and we we look at a way that we can even you know schedule some content to be ready to go at certain times, we're going to supplement that with things in the moment. Uh, we can have a consistency in our content so that people know we exist and that you know we have an opportunity to reach them. So I think that's the key. Um, then back to their to their lead capture pieces, they're they're kind of missing that. They're either going for the sell too much uh, hard and right away and too often, too frequent. Uh, or they, they don't have a clear in-between step, which is kind of that, uh, that soft opt-in to, to add you to an email list, add you to the text messaging, where you get something of value in return. That's not the product, that type of thing, but there's something of value. So that then, and then the nurture process, it's not just done, sell, sell, sell after that, but it's also add some more value, add some more value, let them know who you are, um, help them see how this can benefit them you know, what problems it takes away, those types of pieces. And so that, that's just a few of the gaps I see. And, um, you know, it, it can vary where those pieces are, but I'm seeing, you know, too many of them. That's why I'm talking about it. That's why I've written a book on it. <laughs> Good call. And nice plug, by the way. Nicely done. Uh, <laughs> I should also mention that if, if you're going to be talking, obviously, about how you can work your way through a lead generation, like, uh, you know, steps by steps. But I'm kind of yeah. curious as to what you think, Say, for instance, I'm an entrepreneur or I'm small business and I'm not doing lead generation really at all. I didn't, oh, I can use social media for that? What is the first step you would recommend to anybody, bar none, that they should begin with before you do anything else? Where do you begin? Besides buying your book, obviously. Ha. <laughs> okay, <laughs> anyway, so I'm going I'm to assume that uh, it's a business out there and the business, when they start, they're probably going to have a website, okay? So I'm going to... Um, you know, take it from there. I'm going to say the first thing you do before you actually really want to even um, get too active on social media is I want you to be able to create that email list. I want you to think through what you can have as an offer and to get up that lead capture piece on the website because if we have people coming there and then ultimately leaving without doing anything, um, have we really done anything? Has it, has it been a value? So I want to get that kind of plumbing infrastructure set up and then I want to think about the, the social media, and I want to think about um, the types of posts that you're doing. So I, I kind of break posts down into types. So right. is it a attraction post? Are you just trying to to reach out? You know, maybe it's even with a Facebook ad to the um, ideal audience to get in front of them so that they're aware of you. Um, is it an engagement post where you're trying to work with the algorithms? You're trying to get some engagement where they're liking, following, loving, commenting so that they're going to see more of your content in the future? Or is it a, um, a lead generation one where this is the one where you're going to say, hey, by the way, I've got this, you know, this offer. It's going to help you with X, Y, Z, and you can come over here, sign up, and get that. Okay? So, so I'm going to help them think through what are they doing with their posts, and let's, let's begin to categorize what they're sharing. Nice. So figure out your plumbing for your audience and then get into yes. your posting, which is traction, engagement, and lead generation, which you will dig yeah. deeper into in social media camp. There you go. What people should go. So lead generation, it's not a new thing. It is certainly that's been around for a while. There are traditional methods. There are newer methods that you're certainly going to talk about. What are some emerging ways, like, it's it may be changing for the future as as you were alluding to earlier technology is changing all the yeah. time and it's almost yeah. a full-time job just to keep up with social media and, and all the algorithm changes and such so what what are some areas that are kind of exciting you that are changing lead gen yeah yeah so um definitely you know the, the platforms are there facebook's been around for a number of years now instagram number of years that type of thing but they evolve in terms of uh what people like, what they engage with, what's working, and so you know, right now you got to be looking at doing some video, and uh, these don't have to be green screen, you know, high professional types videos. These can be things even like we're doing here, Facebook Live, that type of piece. So video, live video, are key pieces in that attraction, engagement, and even lead capture piece now that weren't there, uh, you know, definitely three years ago, kind of thing. They they just grown. So, be, be, so the the social channel is still there. You're you're using Facebook, you're using Instagram, um, but the tool that you're using on those is is shifting. So you got to be aware of video, uh, particularly for Facebook, for Instagram, and long form video for YouTube can work well. Um, and then I think you're seeing the rise of stories. You know, so that kind of the Snapchat esque feature first arrived on Instagram, 
and um, now it's taken off on Facebook, Facebook pages, and YouTube Stories is now a thing. So yeah, yeah. And I just saw. Let's see. That uh, it's getting ready to happen. Whether it's already happened or not, we're right at that uh, threshold where stories are being viewed more on Instagram than the actual feeds. Okay, I've so heard so that, we're yeah. yeah. So that's so that's important. And um, again, stories is is unique. You know, you have those fifteen seconds kind of pieces in there with video. Uh, you can tie some of those together. They're going to disappear. There's archives with that. So um, that's that's what's key is I think you need to be aware of video. You need to be aware of stories and how those are evolving. Yeah, and I, I have a, f a funny feeling you're not going to be the first person to talk about video in the next uh, uh, <laughs> series as well as at Social Media Camp. Yeah. Considering yeah. the personal nature of them and the entertainment value of them and what and the benefits they can offer, it's huge. Huge. Yeah. Uh, Angela concurs. She gave a yes, more video content, short form. And it's funny, yeah, it's it's figuring out content regardless of size is vital. Absolutely vital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question as you as a speaker of Social Media Camp. A, a, really excited about your talk. I'll be at Social Media Camp as well, so I'm really excited for what you're bringing to the show. Um, but I have a question as a speaker to Social Media Camp. What are you looking forward to taking away as a – you're going as well. It's not like you're just going and speaking. You'll be presenting, but you'll also be attending and networking. What are you looking forward to taking away from Social Media Camp? Yeah, I mean with uh, with Mari Smith, Scott Stratton, uh, Rand Fishkin, I mean, you know, so I'm looking forward to uh, listening to them. I mean they're always bringing the goods and, um, you know, I think that it's, for me it's an opportunity – to stay in touch uh, with the leading edge, you know, and and what's happening, what's working with, uh, with with people who are really in tune. I mean, and Mari's doing some amazing things with Facebook and and you know working with Facebook, and so uh, she's a key one to to learn from, you know, and and so just like that, a number of those keynote speakers, that type of thing. So I'm just looking forward to being there, learning from them, rubbing shoulders there. Uh, that's 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 a thrill for me every time. Nice. And might I recommend as a runner, you might want to check out Deer Lake and Elk Lake as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna tourism Victoria the hell out of you here and say you should. There's there's a few places to run besides the TC 10K, which is also okay. amazing too. So absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to kind of wrap it up there and just I I, I don't want to give too much away because truthfully yeah. I want everybody to be really keep exciting going for the toast, uh, social media camp in a few months. So uh, again, thank you very much for joining us, Mike Gingrich. Yeah. No, I just want to. Put a shout out to people to to sign up, register because uh, this is a this is one that you know I'm coming back to and coming back to and coming back to. We're looking forward to it. Great people, great speakers, great environment. So if you're on the fence, it's time to jump in. What what am I going to add to that? What am I going to add to that? Thanks, Mike. Perfect. Okay. Well, that'll that'll do it. Oh, by the way, TC10K said Thetis Lake is amazing too. I, I think we should get a little bit of money from Tourism Victoria. I think we're doing a better job. There we go. There Needless we go. to say, perfect. So I'm Russell Walker. Thank you so much for listening uh, for Social Media Camp. And uh, thank you so much for Mike. Can I do it? No, still can't. No, damn it. I still can't reverse. i got to do it like this. Wait a second. Okay, is that, is that working? Yeah, no, damn it. It still doesn't work. Okay, forget it. Thank you. <laughs> so that'll do it. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And we're looking forward to seeing you in a few short months. Take care. See you at Social okay. Media Camp. Bye. Take care. How was that?